GOAT and probably <laughs> the greatest weightlifter of the 21st century. At least the greatest weightlifter in the time that I've been an Olympic weightlifter myself, which is nearly 20 years now. Can't even believe I'm saying that. This guy, Lasha Talazakadzede. Come on, what is it? Talaka, Talaka had, Talaka had a des. Okay. This bloke, in my opinion, is the greatest weightlifter of the 21st century. Ever since I was like a youth lifter, this guy was coming up. Now he's been around probably about the same time frame yeah, as me as Olympic weightlifter. And he's really gone from yeah, strength good. to the strength to now you could argue is the greatest lifter that's ever lifted in the super heavyweight category, purely on the basis of the numbers that he's hit. He's hit historic world records, he's hit recent world records, and is now the world record holder in the super heavyweight category. Before we get into this technical review, we're gonna be taking a look at his technique, which in my opinion, is some of the best technique in Olympic weightlifting there is, especially for a bloke of his size. And we're gonna talk about that in detail in a minute. But what I want you to notice is this beautiful plant here that sat in the background of these shots on this YouTube today. And that is a testament to how much the YouTube channel is starting to grow and that we're really picking up in the world here. So I wanna thank you for your support and for enjoying these technical reviews and for sharing them because it is really helping my channel grow. So I very much appreciate you. So let's get straight into this analysis. First things first, what I want you to see is because this bloke is such a big man, he's an absolute mass of a human being with a swing span of a 747. He gets into a really good start position, all things being said. He naturally, and this is something that you will see taller lifters do, he sits quite low in his setup position. But one thing that you'll notice regardless of his low start position is a couple of key things. The bar is starting on the shins, which I love to see, keeping it as close as possible to the midfoot when he's initiating the lifts. He's keeping his arms nice and straight. You've, you might argue that they're slightly wrapped around the knees, but as soon as you start to see him pull away, he keeps his arms relatively, if not bang straight when he's initiating from the floor, which is great to see. And he lets his knees sit in within his arms to make nice room for him to utilize his legs without having any issues with the arms bending when he's initiating from the floor. So as we progress through this lift, one thing that you'll see is a slight rising of the bum. Because he's such a big bloke, he needs to do this to let that bar be able to track nice and straight. So straight bar tracking in the first phase of the lift. But all in all, he maintains a really nice solid back position when he's moving from the floor. You will see what looks like a little bit of a curvature on his lower back. I don't think that's because he's not creating tension in his lower back. I'm pretty sure that he is. I think it's just because he's such a big bloke. Because you see that that position here maintains the whole way until the bar's getting to the knees. Now I wanna talk about this position because regardless of all the different positions that you will see from the World Championships, a couple of things always remain the same. And one of them is the position when the bar is getting to the knees. It's crucial at this point that the shoulders are staying above the bar, which he does really well, and that the arms are staying nice and relaxed. But not only that, you'll see how he's maintained a nice flat foot position at the point where he's coming past the knees. This is what I absolutely love about what this man does. He maintains a really good bend at the knee as he's coming past the knee and the bar is staying super close to the body. As he transitions into what would be referred to as kind of the power position, you can see now at this point how his shoulders are staying directly over the bar, maintaining a nice knee bend. Now, the reason why this is so important is if you put yourself in the position where you're going to jump as hard as you can or create as much vertical force as possible, you need knee bend. If the legs get too straight at this point, it makes it difficult to create knee bend without letting the shoulders move back to cause knee bend and then you need to be able to extend and you can cause inconsistencies in bar path trajectory with this technique however this is extremely clinical what he does consistent first phase from the floor really uses his legs well through this middle phase as he's coming into extension What's really important is that you keep the feet flat for as long as possible. I don't do this. I wish I did. He does it extremely well. You can see how relaxed his upper body is remaining. We want to let the big muscles do the work, which is his legs. And as he comes through into extension, this is absolutely beautiful. We see those legs start to straighten out at this point, and you'll see how close the bar is remaining through the middle phase of the lift. Sorry for zooming in on your willy, Lasher. Everything's going to look small between those legs. But what you can see is the bar starts to fire out the pocket of the hip here. 
Now, a lot of people get confused that when you watch weightlifting done super fast, that the bar's hitting at the hip. It's not hitting at the hip, it's firing out of the hip crease and you want it to fire vertically, which is what he does really well through this middle phase. You'll see that his eyes are pointing straight ahead and he's trying to keep his chest pointing forward as best as he possibly can. But because this guy's got quite a large tummy, you'll see that the bar has to move around the tummy, but as close as it can through the middle phase of the lift. So we can see that the bar is actually almost clipping, well, it is clipping its belt as it's moving through, which just goes to show how close that bar stays. Last thing I wanna kind of show you before we start to look at the receiving position is after he's hit extension, he remains tall for a very split second, keeps his back of the hands pointing in front of him for as long as he possibly can, but starts to move down as soon as he's hit extension. So he's not staying for a super long time up on his toes. After he hits that extension points, he starts to move down, which is great. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of a marker here at his head, and then we'll also put one at bar height here. You'll see as he moves down, he's losing height from this position. The bar is moving up as he's moving down. This is called weightlessness, okay? And the bar is now floating at this point because it's accelerated, okay, from the floor all the way to the fastest point being at the hip. And this is what's allowing that bar to continue to move up, which is incredible. As he moves down into his receiving position, there's a couple of things that I want to talk about. First things first, let's look at the feet. You'll notice that from that extension position, his feet move up and then out into his catch position. He's always planting with flat feet. The next thing that I want you to notice is what happens with his hands. Now he's pulled the bar in hook grip, but he releases his hook grip into the receive. Now you may not have noticed that before, but you see hook grips on here. And then as we turn over, he releases his hook grip. Now, some people do this because what this allows is as he goes into his receiving position, the wrist to sit back. When we let the wrist sit back into the receiving position, it makes it easier for the shoulder to stay externally rotated at this point and equally his chest to stay upright in this receiving position. So that releasing of the of the thumb into the receive position is because of that. After he's hit his tallest point there and he's starting to move down, you can see how much height's being gained on that bar. And at this point here is where he's hit lockout. So he's actually receiving that bar even higher than where he's pulled it to because of the bars continued to float during this middle phase. As he comes into his receiving position, he's super solid. A couple of key things that I look at and think playing a huge part in that, is the knees tracking over the toes, which is great. We've got good ankle mobility for a really big bloke. He's keeping his knees out over the toe position so his hips can sit between the ankles, which is great. And he's got really good thoracic extension for someone who is so large, okay? And ultimately, if the chest stays upright in this receiving position and shoulders stay externally rotated, it makes it much easier for him to be able to achieve this. What you'll also notice is the positioning of the bar over the crown of the head. This is absolutely perfect. That's exactly where I would want to see it when we're coming to the receiving position. Although you'll see some lifters drop the chest or the head quite aggressively in the receive position. If you're staying externally rotated, it helps the lats stay engaged and use the muscles of the back and the legs equally to hold stable in the overhead position. If the chest is to drop and the shoulders to roll forward, then you're relying solely on the muscles in the mid to upper back for stability, which again will cause inconsistencies in the receiving position, but also put excessive pressure on the shoulder. As he receives the bar, he needs to take a split second to actually check it. And this is what I call checking. As he's come into his received position, he's actually gone to stand up and his hips have shot back a little bit early, which has nearly put him off balance in this received position. So what he's actually done is had to check the lift and go back down before he stands up. The reason that I think this happens is as he's come into his received position, because this is a very submaximal lift for him, the barbell is oscillating and whipping quite aggressively in this catch position. And I think there's a slight bit of trajectory of the bar moving backwards at this point. Now, I don't know what it's like to snatch 225, but I've held 225 kilos before and the bar would be whipping a lot, especially with the force that he's putting through that bar at the middle phase of the lift, probably causing the bar to oscillate a little bit this way. And as he's coming to that receiving position, obviously trying to deaccelerate, he's having to allow for that, which is why he's let the hip shoot back to get the stability. And then he steadied himself to stand up, which is absolutely incredible. All in all, in my opinion, this is, brilliant lift. I don't have any flaws 
to talk about with lashes lifting at all. I think this is a textbook lift. And for someone who is so large, I'd say it becomes even more impressive to be able to execute a technique like so. I hope you enjoyed this technical review of Lashes Snatch. Absolutely incredible. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to go and subscribe to my channel so you can watch the one that I'll post in a few days time on the clean and jerk.